I'm going to begin today by showing you um, a feature that we can access within the wall type properties that's going to allow us to drag these finishes in this wall down or up as we desire. And knowing that's going to be helpful when I um, discuss stacked walls because we can do some pretty neat things with that. If we go in here and go into the properties all the way into the edit assembly dialog box, there's a button here that allows us to modify. This button here is called modify and it's going to allow us to modify individual elements within this wall assembly. So if we click modify and mouse over the boundary of this finish, it shows us, after clicking on it, it shows us uh, a padlock dialog not dialog, a padlock button, and if we click on that, it unlocks this boundary from the rest of the boundaries in this wall. If we click finish, or not finish, OK, 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 you can see now as we are zoomed in on here, it gives us two arrows instead of one. Up here, since we didn't do anything to the top, it only gives us one arrow. Dragging that's going to change our entire wall However, since we unlocked the boundary of this finish only, it allows us to drag this finish down as far as we would need to do. This comes in handy um, for instances such as roofs where you need finishes to end abruptly where the roof comes into the wall. Uh, that's only an example. Now as it applies to a stacked wall, it actually allows us to play with these finishes so we can get the desired effect. You'll notice um, that I'm assuming some prior knowledge of stacked walls prior to watching this video, but uh, if you have any familiarity with Revit, you'll be able to follow along. If you go into the stacked walls properties, you'll notice as we go into the structure of it, we have the one wall type with the other wall type stacked on top of it, as shown here. Now, we have a few options here that are, that are grayed out or otherwise um, disabled. We cannot change the, the values for the top and base offsets for each of these walls. Um, and if you have ever wondered why that is, it is because our finish, our finishes are locked to the boundary that they are given within the individual properties of these walls. So if we cancel this and unlock those finishes from the boundary, um, I'm going to show you this one here, the bottom ICF wall. If we go in here and go edit, edit, modify, and zoom in on here so that we can, actually I'm going to show you the top, unlock that. Now when we go in, okay, okay, now when we go into the properties of our stacked wall, you'll notice that we have an option now to change the top offset for our exterior ICF wall. We didn't have that option before, but since we unlocked this little guy right here, we are now able to change that. If we bring this down to a negative six inches, you'll notice that because that's unlocked, it allows it to drag that down for us. So if we go OK, 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 you'll notice that that's dragged down. And you can do this to um, the finishes for any wall type and as you can see this allows us some flexibility for a stacked wall um, to show cases of joisting intersecting with our concrete foundation wall. Um, it just allows us much more flexibility. 